guys has sent me an appointment setting cold call. He sells SEO services to lawyers. And in this video, I'm gonna run through that. It's gonna be anonymized. And I'll give feedback on an actual sales call. Here's the call. Hello. Hey, Michael. Yes. Hey, this is Jason. Um, you left me a voicemail just a few minutes ago? Yes, yes, I remember. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Michael? Good, um, just good. Good. So notice Jason asked this question. He's like, how are you? Didn't wait for the response and just started jumping into his sales pitch. One, I wouldn't recommend asking a question like, how are you in a cold call? It sounds like this is a call he made. The guy sent him a voicemail and then he called him back. I would jump right into it. But if you do screw up and ask a question like that, wait for the response. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, just to clear things first, just to make sure we're not both wasting our time. Um, we have a lot of partnership deals going on at the moment, and one of those is uh, passing cases that we have. Uh, this is not a marketing. We're not selling you on a six-month marketing thing. We already have cases coming in. It's as simple as uh, looking it over and seeing if it fits with your firm. Um, is that something that we were clear on? Just Instead of getting super salesy off the bat, I would compress it a little bit. Instead of having to sell them, I would say something like, I was looking through your site. You guys obviously have a great team. I was wondering what you do right now for finding new clients. What's your marketing strategy look like? It's tighter, it's more human, and it's in line with my persona. I'm, I'm usually like a to the point type of guy. Somebody else might get more flowery. And what I like to do in these cold calls is get to the point as soon as possible, which is kind of what Jason was trying to do with the wasting your timeline. But I also wouldn't say words like, I don't want to waste your time or let's make sure neither one of us is wasting our time because you don't want them to have that thought in their head that you might be wasting their time. Yeah, I'm curious. Where did you, where did you get my information from, my phone number? That's the response of a guy that has no idea what you're calling him, knows you're in a cold call, and feels like you're wasting his time. The fix to that is being more human in the intro, showing that you've done some research on the company. Uh, we're looking for personal injury on Facebook, and I found you there. You fit with exactly what we need, which is for like dog bites. Um, you've done dog bites in the past, right? If I'm correct. There. Right, right, right. Okay. I, I have done dog bites in the past. Okay. So there's a limited amount of, you know, lawyers in Cali. So we're, you're one of the person that we really wanted to partner up with. Um, do you, are you able to take up partnership right now with uh, multiple cases? Because these are more than just one case a month. It's multiple. Um, well, what volume are you talking about, first of all? So I can... It's kind of cringy, right? He's talking about partnerships and instead of saying, you know, marketing or sales, which maybe this is tested, maybe that works. I'm interested to see where this call goes in the next 14 minutes, because at this point, I probably would have hung up if I was this lawyer. Just um, understand. Not super high, but definitely more than one case a month. And then he down talks his own service. He says, yeah, it's more than one case a month, but it's not super high. The better response here would be to use a case study. So if they say, what type of numbers are we talking about here? You could say, well, for Morgan and Morgan, who have an office just down the street from you, we generate two to three clients every single month. If you don't have a specific case study in their industry, you can go a little bit further back, but some kind of case study. And if you're in marketing, it definitely has to have numbers attached to it. Similar to what we do in a cold email. Okay. All right. Well, here's, um, here's, here's my deal. I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. So, um, I'm independent. I'm on my own. And the fact that he's still talking about marketing with Jason at this point means that this guy is extremely desperate for marketing services. This is a layup and I'm going to be extremely disappointed if he doesn't have a meeting or a sale booked by the end of this call. I contract out my services to a giant insurance firm that I'm working with um, okay. where I, I deal with like high volume, um, large cases, usually in the several millions of dollars. Um, so that's, that's really kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, I, you know, I work with a lot of lawyers. Uh, down here in Southern California. You're located in Northern California though, right? Uh, that's correct. But we sometimes get the uh, offer for cases in Southern as well. What the client's doing here is trying to disqualify himself. Oh, we only do million dollar cases. Also, you're in Northern California, we're in Southern California, which might sound bad, but is actually a very good sign because literally all Jason has to say here, which he didn't, but all he had to say was, 
We work with three lawyers in Southern California right now. They're all getting clients from us. So our services work all around the coast. And we're specifically reaching out to you because based on the research, I can tell you're gonna get a lot of value from it. Typically we do actually source these million dollar deals. Now I'm not saying lie, right? Only say that if that's true, but if you're doing your market research correctly, I'm assuming these guys do source these million dollar deals. If not, Jason should say, oh, all right, I guess we're not qualified and he should hang up. But if you've done your target market research, assuming this guy is a good lead for you and this isn't the first time you've heard this question about the deal size, then you should have a good answer ready to go about how you've done it before in the past. Okay, well, I mean, I mean, nowadays geography I don't think matters that much. I mean, people can work remotely and they can file documents and, you know, all that. So it doesn't, it doesn't concern me uh, you know, hmm. too much. Um, this guy's giving all the latitude you need to make a sale. This is so interesting. Let me, let me just think about this. Um, ba, 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 um, ba. Yeah, I would think about it. If you're doing cases in the millions, uh, settlement for this one, I know for sure that one of our attorneys had like a quarter million dollar case for dog bites. Uh, but let's see. I think my partner has more detail in the cases. Would you want to like take a look at the cases, the calls coming in, see if they fit with your firm, and then uh, we can just move forward from there. Well, I'm, no, I'm just thinking that. about it because the way the yeah. way that I do now, where the way that I, you know, work. Jason should have just said yes. We do million dollar cases if he even thinks that they do. Saying you do quarter million dollar cases when somebody does multi million dollar cases makes you seem smaller than he needs. So you're not qualified to be talking to this guy, right? And I don't know if the firm that Jason's working for actually is or is not qualified to be working with him. But if they have done million dollar cases, Jason should either know that off the bat or shouldn't guess. Work with this other, with this other company is I work hourly. So this, mm -hmm. so with dog bites, I assume it's, it's contingency cases, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. So... What what is your I mean what is your split as far as you know someone being a partner with you? Um, for the legal matter for that, I'll, you know, there's ethical reasons, uh, ethical matters for that. But each case for the average case for a dog bites is thirty thousand dollars. We were thinking of doing like a really low trial period, which is like five percent of just one case. Um, multiple cases are coming in, but we're thinking of just charging for a one case kind of fee, which is like 5% of 30,000. You can just hear the hesitation in his voice. We th we're thinking about doing this. Our cases are $30,000, even though the clients mentioned they're multi-million dollars. There's a lot of hesitation and a lot of disqualification that Jason's doing that he just should not be doing right now. But before we talk about that, we want to give you this uh, trial period for free first because we're, we know we're getting calls coming in. so. And there was no need to double down there. We know we're getting calls coming in. Just say we're gonna give you leads for free and that should be enough to close this guy. I would actually even bring that up way earlier in the call. See if it works for you first or free, and then we can move from there. Uh, how's that sound with you? So let me, let me, under, let me understand this. I, yeah. I just wanna understand this, how it works. You want a, you want a trial period, right? For how long? Um. That's a good question. Maybe a week. You don't know what you're selling. Oh, we want a trial period for how long? I don't know. How long do you want to do it for? Like, come on. Before you're doing these cold calls, before you're doing these appointment setting calls, make sure you know what you're selling to this guy. Because we're getting calls every month. We know exactly how many calls we're getting right now. Uh, they're being sent to voicemail. Some of it is being sent to our partner attorney. Um... If this sounds remotely interesting, I think, I think this could work, but I just want to make sure. It's better if I can just show you like the cases and the calls coming in. Um, well, I mean, I want to, I want to understand the terms. I mean, oh, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I, I'm going to stop the call there, but literally all the client wanted to know was, have you worked with lawyers like him in the past? What does this actually sound like? He's asking again, what the terms are because Jason has no idea what the terms are. And if that's the case, if you're just testing a new product out on cold calls, at least decide beforehand what it's going to be. Is it a week trial? Is it a 30 day trial? What is it going to be? And what does that consist of? From there, Jason, all he had to do was say, 
Does that sound good? The guy would say yes, and then you could get him into the system and start it going. Very simple layup call that was undercut by no knowledge or less knowledge of the product. This is a new format, so please, in the comments, let me know, did you find this valuable? Is there anything else you wanna see when it comes to cold call breakdowns? Give it a like to encourage this type of content on YouTube, and subscribe for more B2B sales training. If you need marketing support for your digital agency, check out experiment27.com. Thanks.